With our focus on Christ this week, we move into the second half of the Gospel of St. John. The Gospel of John is divided into two books, as it were. The first 12 chapters are known as the Book of Signs. It's where St. John narrates uh, to us seven signs or miracles performed by Jesus Christ, just like a sign on the highway points us to a city or to a specific location. So, too, the signs in John's gospel point us to something. They point us to Jesus' true identity. Not only is he the Messiah, not only is he the Son of God, but he is God himself in the flesh, as we read at the beginning of the gospel, where, where St. John says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. John 1, 1 and verse 14. So the first part, the whole first part of the fourth gospel, known as the Book of Signs, reveals to us the true identity of Jesus Christ. The second part of St. John's gospel is known as the Book of Glory. It begins with chapter 13 and finishes with the resurrection appearances in chapter 20. The Book of Signs spans uh, the three years of Jesus' public ministry. The Book of Glory concentrates on the three days of the Easter Triduum, plus the resurrection of our Lord. So the signs or miracles tell us who Jesus really is, and then Jesus, in the second half of the Gospel, tells us what true glory is. And uh, we'll give you a hint, it's not what you think it is. Uh, when he first entered into the holy city, Jesus told his apostles, he said, "'The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified.'" Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. John 12, verses 23 and 24. And even in today's gospel, after Judas took the morsel of food from Jesus' hand and went out into the night to betray him, St. John tells us, when he had left, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and he will glorify him at once. We read John 13, verses 31 and 32. So five times in those two sentences, Jesus speaks of his glorification. The glorification of Jesus in St. John's Gospel is his passion. It's his passion, his death, his crucifixion. Uh, and death for us. In other words, the glory of Christ is his defeat, his death on Calvary. The other three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, when they tell about Jesus' betrayal and crucifixion, they underline how much our Lord had to suffer at the hands of the Jews and the Romans who would execute them, execute him. For example, in Mark 8.31, we read that Jesus began to teach his disciples, quote, that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. The word for suffer in Greek, in the Greek text, is pasco. If I'm not mistaken, that's where we get the word in Latin, passio from, or passion in English. That Greek word pasco for suffering is not even found in John's Gospel. In St. John's Gospel, the optic of suffering is completely seen in Christ's glory. It was his glory to suffer and to die for us. We tend to think, uh, we tend to see suffering as only a curse, as something to be avoided, but that's not how God sees it. Uh, yes, suffering did come into the world because of sin, and so in that sense, it's a curse, but the only reason that God allows human suffering is because he knows he's going to bring a greater good out of it. And he demonstrates that on the cross. Calvary is the place where the greatest evil and the greatest suffering took place, and it's also the place where the greatest good, our redemption, took place at the same time. Even St. Paul unites these two realities of suffering and glory when he says in Romans 8, 17, that we are children of God, quote, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ. But here's the catch. He said, provided that we suffer with him in order that we may be glorified with him. So the apostle himself knew that suffering and glory are intimately united for those who are true children of God. So during this Holy Week, let's ask Our Lady for the grace 
to learn how to better unite our sufferings to her sufferings and the sufferings of Jesus so that we too can one day be partakers in their glory.